Hello, and welcome to the Walk Talks podcast, brought to you by Southland Christian Ministries. We're currently in a verse-by-verse study through the rich and motivating book of Philippians. We trust that you'll find today's episode to be both scripture-saturated and spiritually stimulating. Our prayer is that you, like the Apostle Paul and many Christians through the centuries, would experience enduring joy. Mike Herbster here today on the Walk Talks podcast, coming to you from Southland Christian Ministries. I do hope you're having a great day today and that we can learn from this theme of enduring joy from the book of Philippians, having perseverance with contentment, no matter what we face in life. And remember, Paul is writing this wonderful book to this city of Philippi that is filled with wickedness in its culture, diversity and worshiping of false gods, sensuality and perverseness, and very similar to what we all face today. Our culture isn't friendly to Christ. And Paul goes in, as we we learned yesterday, and he establishes a relationship on account of the Spirit of God directing him uh, to specifically go to this city in Macedonia, this Roman colony. And it was not accepted super well, although some received Christ, Lydia and uh, the Philippian jailer and their families, we know, and I'm sure through them, the gospel spread. And, and then eventually Paul was released from prison miraculously as he sang and, and rejoiced in the Lord. And there's some great thoughts from that in, no matter, in, as far as contentment, no matter what we're facing. And today I want to talk through the idea of why Paul was writing this letter and give us kind of the occasion to the letter, maybe some of the ideas behind the purpose of the letter, and and um, hopefully um, come to the understanding of this challenge that this letter that the apostle is writing does advantage the church. And I want us to have this, this question in mind. Will the truth of God bring advantage to the church as it perseveres with contentment in the midst of a wicked culture. Now, let us understand something about the Word of God. This, The Word of God is given to us by inspiration. It is God-breathed, holy men of God uh, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We have prophets and we have apostles. And we, in the New Testament, the books that we read are apostles, uh, the, the truth given to us from apostles. Now, I know there's people out there that claim that they are an apostle, but please understand, you can't just choose to be an apostle. An apostle was someone who had literally seen the risen Christ. And there are many um, people that claim apostleship today, and I would tell you if they're claiming to be an apostle, that they are a, a false teacher. But what we know from the apostle Paul is that church history gives account to his his testimony over and over again on the road to Damascus as a persecutor of Christians, receiving Jesus Christ as his Savior by seeing the light from heaven and physically seeing the risen Christ, and at that moment receiving Christ. In the book of Acts, um, chapter 26, he gives that testimony that the Lord spoke to him for this purpose to be a witness and a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ and to go and share Christ. Uh, both locally and abroad, into um, the Lord called him into a mission work, evangelistic work, church planting work. So we saw um, what brought him in Acts chapter 16 to um, bring the truth of God directly to Philippi. But um, fast forward to the end of the Apostle Paul's life because that's the occasion for the writing of of this book back to the Philippian believers. Now, Paul is accustomed to writing an epistle or a letter. That's just another word for epistle. To particular churches that he had served and worked with, prayed for, helped find pastors for, traveled through, ministered to. Now, in today's world, you could picture a an evangelist, yet the Apostle Paul would often stay for a lengthy time, But I definitely think Paul would be like an itinerant evangelist who was ministering to multiple churches and as an apostle. So as um, the power of God was on his life, the ability to uh, share the truth of God, 
in written form has been accepted by really all church historians and canonized in our, in our New Testament. So this book, along with the other majority of the, the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul. And this book is considered um, as a prison, what's called a prison epistle. There were other prison epistles as well, but this one was definitely written from prison. And Paul is writing to a church that had at that time become a model of 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 church churches. I don't know if you've ever been to a really really good church. Hopefully, you say that your own church is a good church and a model of what it should be. Uh, from the very beginning, it stayed healthy. Paul was in, uh, brought his exhortation to them. Um, he he uh, doesn't like in other books like First Corinthians and Second Corinthians and um, Galatians, where he's really fighting against major problems in the church and speaking to those needs. He really has a healthy respect for the church at Philippi, and you see that in his writing. But we know that Paul is in prison. Now, Paul went to prison a lot. It was, it was said that he didn't um, necessarily go into town looking for the uh, nicest restaurant, but he was going into town to look for the nicest prison because he knew that's where he was going to end up. I mean, Paul spent a lot of time in prison, and he wrote a lot of his um, epistles from prison. So what was his purpose in writing this epistle from prison? Oh, let me say this, that uh, many discussions and uh, studies have been done on which prison stay did the Apostle Paul write this? Well, my personal belief, after studying this for uh, some time and um, even reading some of the um, opposing views, because Paul was in prison at Caesarea, Paul was in, in prison in Jerusalem, Paul was in prison in Rome several times, couple times, and um, Paul obviously went to prison there in Philippi, and there were many places he was in prison, but the extended stays of Paul's prison time uh, came at Caesarea, and in particular in Jerusalem, as well as in in, uh, in Rome, and this is uh, accounted for at the end of the book of Acts, and so I definitely believe this is probably um, one of his last stays in the Roman prison. What we do know uh, about his stay in the Roman prison was that he had ability to have visitors. He had ability to write letters, so he had some ability. I mean, he wasn't, um, you know, in a place where he couldn't do anything. Well, he was definitely guarded. And in, in the end of the Book of Acts, it says that he had um, people that would come in and out to to guard him, and that he would give the gospel to them, which is also a great challenge to us, even while he was in prison. He exemplified this um, this enduring joy and a persevering contentment. But I believe he wrote this while he was at Rome, and I, I don't have time to get into all the reasons why, but I think that is actually the most traditional view, is that he uh, wrote this from Rome. And pretty much everyone agrees that the apostle uh, that the epistle was written by Paul. And actually, there is. Um, maybe you've heard the name Polycarp, but in his writings, very early historical writings, he commented specifically about the letter of Paul to the Philippians and uh, pretty much ex widely accepted that the Apostle Paul is the author of this. There are some New Testament books that some people discuss and you know, kind of actually debate about who the actual author was, but this one was definitely... It's pretty much regarded across all historical evidence that it was the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter, and I, I think probably 75% would agree that it was written from the Roman prison at the end of his life, just before he lost his life um, for the cause of Jesus Christ. Now, one other interesting thing is that many of his letters have kind of a flow to it that um, the this epistle doesn't. Matter of fact, everybody agrees that it almost looks like there's several little letters within the letter that he wrote. Um, if you can just kind of picture um, the idea of writing several different things and then combining it into one particular letter. And I personally believe that that could have happened because of the situation with Epaphroditus, who Paul uh, recommends people to follow in the book of Philippians. Now, Epaphroditus was the individual who actually carried the letter from prison to the Philippians. And so um, they didn't have uh, mail, mail trucks back then. They didn't have email. They didn't have uh, Facebook. You know, We have so much privilege with the correspondence and communication we can have. But Paul sent this letter by way of Epaphroditus, and he thanks Epaphroditus, who was sent by the Philippians 
to bring encouragement to the Apostle Paul in prison. And so he sends that letter back. And could it be that uh, what happened is Epaphroditus got very, very sick upon arrival to see the Apostle Paul, and he had to delay his return to Philippi. Could it be that the reason we feel like there, there's kind of a fragmentation to the letter, some think, it, could it be that he, is he combined everything that he was writing and he put it all together in, in, because he had extra time in his um, writing? I don't know, or possibly it's just written that way on purpose to bring out the, uh, the specifics that Paul wants to, wanted to bring out. But I think that's an important important thought, is that the truth was sent um, by the Apostle Paul through Epaphroditus back to the church to bring advantage to the church. And we're going to look at some of those themes and draw some conclusion conclusions of ways that we can grow through those themes in our next uh, in our next podcast tomorrow. But the the answer to the question at the beginning of the podcast is: Will the truth advantage the church? You see, the church that you go to and I go to is a place where we should have unity and strength around the theme of Jesus Christ being the center focus of our life, the salvation of our soul, the sanctification of our walk, that Christ should be all and in all. And any chance we get to have more of the truth always brings advantage. I want to encourage you to be faithful to your church. Take advantage of the truth that is given at your church. Now, that truth is given directly from the teaching of Scripture. It's also given through um, your pastor and the application of the Scripture. Youth pastor, pastor. And it can be um, brought to you by your parents, and, and the truth of God always works. Give attention to the truth of God. And it's interesting how the Philippian believers accepted this letter Um, followed its truths, and were benefited by the truth. There's always benefit in the truth. Take advantage of that truth today, and like the Apostle Paul sent that truth, and they received it, others will send that truth to you. The Bible is for you. Receive it and put it into practice in your life. May God give you blessing as you give, give weight to the truth of God today. Thanks for listening, and hope that's a help to you in understanding the book of Philippians. It's been a blessing to look into God's word together today. As you digest what you've learned from Philippians, let me encourage you to think of practical ways to live out the truth that has been presented. If this episode has been an encouragement to you, consider sharing it with a friend who may benefit as well and make your plans to join us again soon right here on the Walk Talks podcast.